What's up guys, today we'll be talking about the 13 inch Surface Book 2. Now I know it's getting pretty old and it should be due for a refresh once Intel releases their low power Coffee Lake R CPUs, but the idea of a detachable 2-in-1 laptop was a really interesting idea to me. So even if the specs aren't the latest and greatest, it's still a unique enough of an idea and laptop that I think deserves a video. That and the fact that I really didn't feel like waiting any longer for the Surface Book 3 to come out, so here we are. And without further ado, let's hop right in. The build quality is absolutely exceptional. It's full magnesium everywhere, so the keyboard doesn't flex, the screen doesn't flex, and the hinge is also entirely magnesium with great tension out of the box. Now, when you look at it with all of the gaps and places for debris to fall into and potentially damage the hinge, it's a little bit concerning, but since the original Surface Book that came out a few years back, there haven't been any widespread issues, so it's looking pretty good so far. My only criticism with the build is the screen mobile if you're planning to get the Surface Pen to draw on it, but that's about it. It's also a lot heavier than you might expect for a 13-inch laptop to be, but since the screen can actually detach off the standalone tablet, or the base, that's kind of where the added weight comes in, and I'll talk about that later on. Now, because of that, most of the core internals, like the CPU, are housed in the screen. So for light use, the entire bottom portion of the device feels like a cold block of metal. So when you're doing heavy tasks, it's not as hot on the keyboard. And to warm it up, you need to run the dedicated GPU, and the base model does not come with that. And I mention that because I know some people that don't particularly like a cold laptop, so keep that in mind. Okay, the screen. There's a lot to talk about here, so let's start with the panel itself. It's a 3000 by 2000 touchscreen with pen support. It's got 385 nits of brightness, so it's pretty bright. The color gamut and color accuracy are both good. Contrast is really good, and the only thing that bugs me is their anti-reflective coating. It's not quite as good as the MacBook Pros. So the screens they're using are really good, and the taller 3x2 aspect ratio just feels nicer to use for productivity. But for gaming, and this really only applies to those who paid the 2600 bucks for the GTX 1050, the software support for this aspect ratio is really limited, and pretty much none of the games I tested supported anything but the native 3000 by 2000 resolution, if you're going for the 3 by 2 aspect ratio, that is. It goes without saying that the 1050 is not going to play games at that high of a resolution, so what ends up happening is you get some small black bars on the top and bottom where you lower the resolution, and it's just not an ideal experience. So if you're a madman like me, and you were considering this partially as a 13-inch gaming laptop, you'll want to look elsewhere. The bezels do look pretty thick on video, but keep in mind it's a 13-inch screen, and it also acts as a tablet, so you don't really want the bezels to be like XPS 13 kind of thin, or else your finger will register taps on the edges when you're using it in tablet mode. And it also houses a really good webcam with Windows Hello Facial Unlock. You can also undock it and attach the screen on backwards so you can get a bit closer to the screen now that the base is out of the way. The placement of the speakers is actually really good, better than having them beside the keyboard actually, since they now fired perfectly at your ears. The only problem is that these speakers are not particularly loud. Like, if you check out the speaker grills, they're quite small, and I guess I expected something better given how good the Surface Laptop speakers are, but hopefully next time they put in some rockin' speakers. The keyboard is pretty much identical to the Surface Laptop, except it feels a little bit heavier, like the key switches require a bit more force, but it's otherwise nearly identical. It's got a great layout, they filled the function row with actually useful keys, the function key is a toggle, which I really like, so you hit the button and you can switch between having the function row act as F1, F2, F3, or volume and brightness controls. It's got three-stage white LED backlighting, and there's just nothing out of the ordinary to trip you up, so it's really easy to get used to. Overall, great keyboard. The trackpad is about as good as it gets for a Windows laptop. The clicks are solid and tactile, it uses a frosted glass surface, and obviously Windows precision drivers. It is a Microsoft laptop after all, so I'd expect it to have a good trackpad. And if you're wondering if it's a bit small given the extra space around it, I actually find it to be the perfect size for gestures and for avoiding palm rejection issues. So overall, great trackpad. On the left are two USB-A's and a full-size SD slot. On the right you have a Surface Connect port with a USB-C port. And on the top right of the screen is the headphone jack. 
I would have preferred it to be closer to the bottom, but otherwise decent port selection. You can also use the Surface Connect port to expand kind of like a Thunderbolt 3 port if you'd like, but the lack of Thunderbolt 3 does bug me on a device this expensive. It is their flagship device after all. You can get the Surface Book 2 in a bunch of different configurations, so this one is running the i7-8650U, 16 gigs of RAM, a 512 gig SSD, and the optional and very expensive GTX 1050. The RAM is soldered on, but it's not like you were going to be opening this thing up anyway, so definitely get as much memory and storage as you need when ordering. The SSD they're using varies depending on the unit, so mine comes with the SK Hynix PC401, and other units might come with a different drive like the Samsung PM961. The reads and writes on my drive are excellent. Performance with this machine is really good actually. It doesn't thermal throttle and because the CPU and the GPU are completely separated, like the CPU is in the screen and the GPU is in the base, neither of them thermal throttle. The Wi-Fi card inside is getting me 518 megabits per second using the iPerf 3 test. It's using a Marvel Avastar card instead of Intel, which I find a bit weird. It's not a company that I've heard before. The speeds are good, but Intel cards do perform better. Because the core components are housed in the screen, the surface temperatures on the keyboard and palm rest area are actually cold to the touch. It only warms up if you start running the GPU, and even then, it doesn't get all that hot. Under load, the fans can get quite loud, like there's two fans cooling the 1050 alone and those sound like jet engines under a heavy load, but the tablet portion actually has no fan in it so it's completely silent. You can run stress tests on it all day long and nothing. And obviously, because of that, it's not able to maintain the boost clocks for extended workloads, which is weird because there's a vent or grill on the sides of the screen, but there's nothing actually moving air through that gap. There are two separate batteries in the Surface Book 2, a 20 watt hour in the screen and a 63 watt hour in the keyboard portion giving it a total of 83 watt hours for a 13 inch laptop. And under normal use, so without the dedicated graphics card, I'm pulling like 10, 11 hours of battery life which is mad. Uh, just to clarify, Microsoft advertises it with a 70 watt hour battery but I'm seeing actual capacities of 83 watt hours. And the charger they include is a super compact 102 watt hour charger with a magnetic end that goes in either the base or the tablet. Now it is a significantly thicker device than something like the Surface Laptop and it's also much heavier but the benefit of having the GTX 1050 and the ridiculous battery life is totally worth it in my books. So my overall conclusion is this. The GTX 1050 config is so expensive it's not even funny. But consider this, right? This is a relatively portable 13 inch laptop with 10 plus hours of battery life. It fits in a GTX 1050 in a 13 inch footprint, which most 13 inch laptops don't do. It's a two in one device and the screen detaches into a tablet and it's just got really good hardware overall, like the keyboard, the trackpad, the build quality. It's able to charge from both USB-C or with its included magnetic charger so you don't yank your laptop off your table. It's a really good laptop and given what it offers, I don't think it's too outrageous. Like it's outrageous, right? Like 2,600 bucks, that's not cheap, but it's not unreasonably so given all the good hardware that it has. You gotta pay a lot of money to some smart people to be able to engineer something like this, right? So yeah, if you got the budget, it's an awesome device and I think you'll really enjoy using it. That's gonna wrap this video up. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time.